So as we head into the 2017 growing season, you know, we're getting closer every day. And, and our concern right now is the fact that we've had a pretty mild winter. And with mild winters means some of the pests that we don't have to normally deal with, particularly early in the season, if they're able to survive because of the mild winter, it could mean that we could have some higher than normal insect populations, particularly as we get into the middle part of the season. Some of those pests are migratory, you know, by nature, and they, they don't live here, but with this mild winter, if they survive, uh, through the winter then we start out with a population and they grow faster and get big, the population gets bigger and, and we soon have problems with them and some of those pests are like uh, fall army worms are migratory they they come up here soybean loopers those kind of pests that are that don't normally survive in the state and one of the biggest problems that we started seeing last year that really concerns me is the red banded stink bug this is a pest that back a few years ago, back uh, about four or five years ago, we had several mild winters that were strung together. And as a result, red banded stink bug got pretty much across the state of Arkansas, even up in the Boot Hill, Missouri and, and Tennessee. And, and this year we, we watched them uh, start in South Arkansas uh, about mid to late season in our soybean cropping season. And they quickly got up to about uh, Mariana, Arkansas at treatment level. And so if those, if this particular pest survives, it's one through the winter and, and they get started early in our crop, they could cause some significant damage to our crop. They're not like our regular stink bugs, like the brown stink bug and the green and the southern green and those kind of things. This pest has the potential to really impact yield for our growers and it's one we're gonna to have to be real watchful for and scouting. So they cause a lot more damage. They're hard to control. Uh, when you spray, you don't get uh, quite the, the kill that you would get with uh, regular stink bugs and they bounce back so much quicker. These pests hit uh, south of I-20 in Louisiana and south Mississippi this year and caused significant damage uh, where they missed one application, they lost 25-30% yield and uh, a lot of fields were total total loss. So we we got to be concerned about this pest and, and with this mild winter I think it could have some, it, it could have a, it could be a big problem for us in the state of Arkansas. So we're going to be watching that really closely and we're going to be reporting on it as we go through the season. If we start picking them up early that's going to be a red flag to us if we start picking them up in beans and some of the early planted beans this year. So we'll be watching that real close and we'll be putting it out on, you know, in the Twitter sphere and that kind of stuff and getting it out in the blogs and that kind of stuff and keeping people up to speed on it. Some of the, just a regular pyrethroid really doesn't do a very good job of control. Uh, we normally stick with bifenthrin and orthene for control or combinations of insecticides really are the key to getting good control. So single product applications are not as effective as, as tank mixing for control of this pest. So those are the tips that we'll be passing along as we, as we see them develop in the state. Uh, we're, we're very thankful to the Soybean Promotion Board for all their support uh, for our programs. All the efficacy work that we do on red band, stink bug, and kudzu bugs, and, and all that work that, uh, for bow worms. And we're doing a trial right now that's uh, about uh, automatic applications, trying to cut down the number of applications that we make on, on soybeans and making sure that when we do treat, that we're treating to, to get a return on our investment. You know, it's so important with production prices as low as they are and the cost of production continually going up, you have to find ways to save money so the farmer can be profitable and that's what we're trying to do is, is try to make applications when they're warranted and not, not make applications when, when you don't have anything out there to control. So all that work is funded through the Soybean Promotion Board and we're, we're appreciative of their support.